So, you guys remember the Ocean Gate situation? It just happened like last week. Um, the submersible that went down to visit the Titanic had the CEO of the company on it. He was directing the vehicle with the controller and he died in the implosion. Apparently, the CEO ignored multiple warnings from professionals in the industry telling him that his method of building things were incorrect. Now, a local deep sea engineer out of Alameda says OceanGate CEO ignored early warning signs that the material used to build the submersible wasn't safe. ABC 7 News reporter Lena Howland brings us this story. Long before a Titan submersible carrying five people on a quest to see the Titanic wreckage lost all communications before later imploding came the early warnings. We all told him, you know, someone is going to be killed in this thing and you, you've got to not do it. OceanGate CEO Stockton Rush paid a visit to Alameda back in 2015 while he was in the thick of building his submersible to meet with Liz Taylor. Taylor is a deep sea engineer and president of DOER Marine Operations where they build their own submersibles. He wanted to hear her findings from a research project. Stockton felt like he was pushing the edge. You want to push the envelope use some new materials. And that's when Taylor specifically advised against the use of carbon fiber, as it's still experimental and has not been tested over time in extreme depths of the ocean. It being hollow on the inside or just, you know, one atmosphere on the inside and having the tremendous pressure of the ocean you know, trying to push in on it. It just doesn't, it's not, not the right material. So this guy is using a material that they're telling him, dude, it doesn't work, it's not tested. Now, one would say, well, Rashad, what about innovation? What about experimentation? What about looking to see if maybe this material is the right material to use? And I would agree. However, this guy's a billionaire. As a billionaire, you have the resources to take a machine and send it down to the bottom of the ocean without risking your life or the lives of anyone else around you. If it's controllable with that remote controller, by all means, send it down there. Send it down there. Send, send the submersible down there without anyone on it. Send it down there, or if you're so confident in it, you go down there by yourself. But when you start having people pay you $250,000 to go down there with you in a submersible that's not in any way, shape, or form supported or or the people in the industry who are about that life are telling you that this material is inappropriate for the task you're trying to get done, and you will have people pay you $250,000 to go down there and get and, and to to implode? Come on, bro. Like I, I'm all about I'm all about innovation. I'm all about technology. Look, I support taking things to the next level. I support innovation. But we gotta be realistic. You're a billionaire. You should be prioritizing the lives of your patrons if you're so adamant about making money from this. But if you're going to sit there and take that submersible down there, you're truly dead set on that task. At least send it down there with the remote control or go down there by yourself. But to bring those people with you for 250,000 is crazy. Then in 2018, the Manned Submersible Committee of the Marine Technological Society backed her up, writing a letter also urging Rush not to proceed. Ignoring all warnings, he moved forward. So where this really went kind of askew was that it was like, I don't need that. <laughs> I've done the math. You know, I'm confident in my engineering. Taylor says Rush cut obvious corners, like not building his sub in a pair to have self-rescue capacity or with what's called an ROV. That's a remotely operated vehicle that can serve as a self-rescue tool. There was no capable ROV on board. There was no second submersible. And she says because Rush was technically operating in international waters, there was no way of stopping him. So when this happened, through this this combination of you know hubris complacency and greed it was incredibly frustrating and, and so sad for the families that they didn't have maybe they just had no idea of the true level of risk that they were putting themselves at so this guy gets a letter written to him by the folks that are really about that life the folks who are trained professionals college university educated experts in this field of marine exploration biology whatever well not biology but marine exploration you know all of that stuff they're building these submersibles submarines all of these different vehicles for underwater travel underwater exploration they sign they write a letter to this dude saying hey big dog you might be tripping and he decides in his grown mind in his old ass mind to say you know what 
I'm ignoring y'all. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to do exactly what I want to do. Professionals? Educated? Experienced? Man, if y'all don't get the fuck up out of here with that shit, I'm doing what I want to do. Shit. That's basically what he said. And then to sit there and ignore these professionals, like, at least, I wonder what's on that waiver. I really wonder if this CEO told these people on the waiver, oh, by the way, all the professionals in this field told me not to use the materials that are used on this submersible. So if you want to get on, <laughs> just so you know, we might employ, like, he, I, Sure, there was a mention of death on the waiver. There's a difference between, yo, we might die because the 0.1% of, like, inc like, just, like, incidents might happen. And then saying, yo, we might die because I've cut so many corners that we're just going to die. Like, that's different, okay? It's different if they say, big dog, you know, sometimes shit happens. There's, like, a 1% chance of us just dying, like, you know, just so you know. And... Like, just actively cutting every possible safety corner possible because you want to be the next fucking Ford, the, ne the next Carnegie, the next fucking, the next Rockefeller. You want to be the next big name in innovation and industries in America. You want to be the next Musk. Like, bro, that's not fair to your customers. Like, if you want to do it by yourself, by all means, but to, to sit there and have these folks just implode with you is crazy. It's absolutely insane. Insane crazy behavior insane so cbs sunday morning also covered the situation and apparently one of their reporters was this close to getting on the submersible with stockton rush bro last summer a company called ocean gate invited sunday morning to join an expedition to the titanic at the time i was thrilled next time i come out of this doorway i'll either be a changed man forever or cursing the bad weather as the whole world knows now, Ocean Gate's business was taking adventure seekers on these Titanic dives. Well, we're sitting on the Titanic. We yeah. are on the Titanic. <laughs> for $250,000 a ticket on a one of a kind carbon fiber submersible called the Titan. Carbon fiber is a great material. It's better than titanium, it's better than a lot of other materials. We don't ask Cap though, because the people who know this stuff, the people who are highly trained, highly experienced, told you it's not good. So it's like, 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 what are we talking about? Like, I, and we know it wasn't good because unfortunately things went the way they went. But damn, like for him, like, imagine you're sitting there, you don't know anything about marine exploration, you don't know anything about going under under the water and just traveling and exploring, and you got this dude that you're trusting to be an expert. He's a billionaire. He's got a, a degree. And, and, and I think, like, I think he got a, a degree in, like, in some sort of, like, physics or something. You're trusting this guy with your life. And here he is talking about, he just spewing bullshit. Just cap. Just straight cap, bro. This is crazy. Is Stockton Rush, the CEO of OceanGate and the designer of the sub. Last Sunday, as he was piloting the sub to the Titanic, it imploded, killing him and his four passengers. We spent nine days at sea with Rush last summer, and in wake of the tragic news, we thought you might like to see more of what we saw and hear more of what Stockton Rush said. The Titan wasn't like any previous deep sea submersible. There was no dashboard, just a touchscreen computer and a single power button. We only have one button, that's it. <laughs> Wait a minute, I've, I've seen submersibles and they are banks of controls yeah. like like cockpit after cockpit exactly and this is to other submersibles what the iphone was to the blackbird see i'm not trusting that the moment you show me yeah see if i see other submersibles and are full of controls and all sorts of other stuff you got you got a uh, uh, a a uh, what's the vehicle the lady named a, a a second submersible attached to the main submersible for escape to save ourselves you don't even have that attached there you've got a, a an xbox controller you've got a, a touch screen, a button. Look, I understand innovation, but bro, safety is more important when you've got people riding with you to the Titanic, bro. It's not like, this is like, come on now. Come on, like have some some level of care and concern for your fellow man. Like this is crazy. This is absolutely insane. Like comparing his submersible to these other ones, I'm starting to see why while folk were like just clowning this submersible. Not not that it's okay to clown their desk, but I can see why people were clowning the idea of going down there in that vehicle. Facts. Many of its components seemed surprisingly cheap. For views outside the sub, he had installed store-bought security cameras. As for the ceiling lights, 
I got these from uh, Camper World. And then there was the on. steering unit. Um, we run the whole thing with this game controller. <laughs> Come on! So it seems like a lot of the way you made this is by taking off-the-shelf parts and sort of MacGyvering them together. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Does that not raise anybody's eyebrows in the industry? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm definitely an outlier. Yeah, yeah, definitely an outlier. Definitely. I'm sorry, but like now that we're getting this like this, I'm so glad that CBS News went with this dude last year because now we get to see the full picture. This man was cutting so many corners. It's crazy. Bro, you would have, bro, you're a billionaire. Why do you have store-bought security? Bro, go do billionaire nigga shit. Go buy you real camp, bro. Why you, okay, so this man's got a submersible. You can only see out of one like one is that normal in submersibles you can only see out of one window you got security cameras set up so people can see like like store-bought security like, bro get real big like what do, like bro this is ridiculous it's it's ridiculous game controllers security cameras all type of just cheap cheap lights like i'm sorry bro if you're a billionaire and this is what you're doing i can't help but feel like this guy's being lazy and just cutting corners I don't see innovation. I see I see laziness, bro. I, I don't see, like, it's interesting that he's able, because see, anybody could do that. Those people who, in, the, in those fields, of course, anybody in those fields who were educated enough and have the knowledge and the, and the know-how could do what he did. There's a reason why they're not doing what he did. There's no way he's onto something and everyone else is just crazy. There's no way he's just seeing the light and everyone else is just ignorant and can no longer, like, bro, there's no way he has discovered long lost alien technology and he's just tapping in and we're all lost. There's no way. He's cutting mad corners. There were a lot of rules out there that didn't make engineering sense to me. Everyone I know keeps asking me the same question. Why would you get on that dangerous sub? Well, first of all, Stockton Rush had the credentials. He majored in aerospace engineering at Princeton. He designed and flew his own airplanes. He designed previous submersibles. Second, he was emphatic that the important parts of the Titan were rock solid, like the carbon fiber body for which NASA served as a consultant. There's certain things that you want to be uh, buttoned down, and that's the pressure vessel. Once the pressure vessel is, you're certain it's not going to collapse on everybody, everything else can fail. Your thrusters can go, your lights can go, you're still going to be safe. Third, I was convinced by an expert, P.H. Narjolet, the veteran deep sea explorer who also perished in the Titan. Over the years, he'd been to the Titanic more than just about anyone. How many times have you been? Uh, with the last uh, dive, uh, 37 times. You've been to the Titanic 37 times? Yes. I was in charge of uh, one, two, three, four, five, five sub. How different is the Titan from those other subs? Completely different. Most of them, you have a sphere. Was there never a point when you wondered about the, the safety of the sub at that depth? No. Two or three years ago, I had a phone call with uh, Stockton, and he explained to me that he was doing a, a lot of tests. He showed me some the, the ways they were building the stuff. I said, OK, that's fine. That's fine. I have no problem. But through it all, Stockton Rush defended his unconventional approach. I mean, anything when you're trying something outside the box, people inside the box think you're nuts. <laughs> Same thing when uh, Elon Musk was doing SpaceX. Inside the box, everything's scary. But as early as 2018, there was concern about the Titan's design. A former employee says that when he raised safety concerns, Rush fired him. That same year, a group of submersible engineers urged Rush to seek certification of the Titan by a safety agency. Rush declined saying that regulation would stifle innovation. Bro, he's crazy. Dog is cr like, bro, look, I understand the, the importance of innovation. I understand the importance of exploration. I'm all for it. I'm with it. But we have regulations for a reason. And you're a billionaire. If you wanted these people to see things your way, all you got to do is run tests. Look, if you're so convinced that your new technological way of doing things is safe, you can probably get it certified. You're a billionaire. You could sit there and petition these people for 20 million years. Hey, I wanna ask about this, I wanna ask about this, what about this, what about that? You're a billionaire, you could do it if you wanted to. He's arrogant, he was arrogant, he was extremely arrogant. 
He was extremely impatient. He was, bro, like the idea of the unfortunate reality that someone trusted this guy with their life boggles my mind. This guy should not have been operating this. The fact that he did not have any sort of certification, any sort of inter the fact that there's no international system saying, hey, this Stockton Rush guy right here, a candidate. This nigga, he don't, he don't listen. He don't listen. Don't let him, don't let him go anywhere near the Titanic. That's what should have happened. There should have been some sort of oversight, some sort of governmental overreach. But instead, we see this. We see this. Chaos. Absolute chaos. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, this guy. This guy is just an absolute disaster, bro. Like, I, you cannot make this type of, you cannot make this up. The lack of care, the lack of concern, it's unbelievable. And the people who went on there paid this man $250,000 to implode under there because of this guy's absolute lack of care and concern. Then we think about the 19-year-old kid who didn't even want to go. But he ended up on there because his dad made him go. And now they're gone. Because of this guy Stockton Rush's inability to heed warning and listen to reason. I understand the importance of innovation, but I'm pretty sure Elon Musk is sending unmanned rockets to space. That are those rockets that are blowing up, I'm pretty sure there aren't any people on there. Stockton Rush, you went down there with yourself and four others, bro. That's not the same thing. Like comparing yourself to SpaceX and Elon Musk is fine in terms of innovation. But when you start risking other people's lives to prove a point when other people are telling you, yo, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. I'm sure SpaceX con consults all sorts of professionals in that field. The difference between you and them is you don't listen. So unfortunately, people lost their lives as a result of this guy. And it's crazy the amount of warnings he ignored. This guy had his mind made up, and he wasn't going to listen to anybody but himself. It's unfortunate, but this is apparently what was going on behind the scenes the whole time. Let me know what y'all think in the comment section below. Like, comment, subscribe. I'm out.